As so many countries and space agencies seem to rush to the moon as soon as possible, it's important to figure out how to make it more habitable. With weak gravity and no protective layer in the almost non-existent atmosphere, the only thing moon offers to us is an abundance of soil, and soil can help us build moon farms and turn the moon into a self-sustaining place. While China took major steps in taking plants right to the moon, NASA also makes pivotal studies on growing plants in lunar soils. But how successful we were so far? In 2019, China's Chang'e 4 lander touched down on the moon and deployed the U-2 rover. The rover's biological experiment payload conducted a very important experiment that paved the way for future moon residents. The payload included cotton, potato, Arabidopsis, and rape seeds, along with fly eggs, yeast, and 18 milliliters of water, which was kept at a constant atmospheric pressure. The purpose of the experiment was to see the effects of low gravity, intense radiation of the moon on the growth and health of terrestrial organisms. The plan was to grow plants in Earth soil and keep them inside special tins. To keep things under control, sunshine was admitted to the plants through a guide tube, and as a result of photosynthesis, oxygen and nutrients would be released. Yeast and fruit flies were for sustaining this small ecosystem. What's shocking was that after about two weeks, it was reported that cotton seed, rape seed, and potato seeds had sprouted under such different conditions. But things didn't continue as planned. China wanted to run the experiment for 100 days, but only a day after the plant sprouted, lunar night fell. And it means there was a huge temperature change which led to the death of sprouts. As a result, experiment lasted only nine days. Although it proved that it's not entirely impossible to build an ecosystem on moon, we still don't know how risky it'd be to eat veggies grown there. But China is not planning to stop there. Chinese scientists are already conducting a research on how to make space farm using lunar lava tube caves. While China accomplished a huge milestone with this mission, the thing is plants were in Earth soil. For such small experiments, it wouldn't be very difficult to carry soil to another celestial body. But if we try to build a colony on the moon and eventually on Mars, we need to learn to grow plants in lunar soils. Thankfully, it was also done, this time by NASA. In 2022, NASA revealed details about a very interesting study in lunar plant researches. The main objective of the study was to see whether plants can grow right on the moon or not. To do this, they used the lunar soil that was brought to Earth by Apollo astronauts almost five decades ago. These astronauts, including legends like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, brought back samples of the lunar surface material, which is called regolith. Ever since, NASA saved some of those samples for future researches while studying the rest. And now that we are living in that future, three of those samples have been used to grow plants. For the first time in history, researchers have grown a tough but well-studied plant called Arabidopsis thaliana in the nutrient-poor lunar regolith and this can change space exploration forever. As each and every study brings us closer and closer to our limitless dreams about being multi-planetary species, this study plays a huge role in realizing those dreams much faster. If we can succeed in planting vegetables on the moon, we can develop new food sources for future astronauts living and operating in deep space. Besides, with living on the moon, this research could also help us understand how plants might overcome harsh conditions in food-scarce areas right here on Earth. This research is called Apollo Next Generation Sample Analysis Program, and it started 50 years ago in Apollo Labs, now continue in Artemis Labs. Scientists of the University of Florida, who have made a breakthrough discovery through this study, first started with asking the question of whether plants can grow in regolith. Fortunately, the answer to this question is a resounding yes. Plants do grow in lunar regolith. Of course, they were not as robust as plants grown in Earth soil, but pay attention to that. They did indeed grow. But why was Arabidopsis thaliana chosen for such experiment? Arabidopsis thaliana is a relative of mustard greens and other cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower. Since it's small and grows quite easily, it is one of the most studied plants in the world. So for this special experiment, Arabidopsis seed were put into lunar soil samples collected on the Apollo 11 
12 and 17 missions, with only one gram of regolith used for each plant. After being watered, plant trays were put into terrarium boxes in a clean room. Besides from water, a nutrient solution was also added daily. To the scientists' surprise, only after two days, every single one of them started to sprout until day six. After the sixth day, it was obvious that the plants were not very robust. So the plants started to grow more slowly and had stunted roots. Additionally, some of them had stunted leaves and reddish pigmentation. So for this first study, researchers waited only 20 days. And just before the plants started to flower, the team harvested the plants. In a biological system, plant genes are decoded in multiple steps. First thing is to transcribe the genes, or DNA, into RNA, and then the RNA is translated into a protein sequence. These proteins are what we are looking for to learn the biological processes in a living organism. Interesting part comes now. Sequencing the RNA revealed that the plants in lunar soil were indeed under stress. They had reacted the exact way researchers have seen Arabidopsis respond to growth in other harsh environments where soil has too much salt or heavy metals. But what gives us hope is that plants reacted differently depending on which area of the moon sample was collected from. Let me explain. Plants grown in the Apollo 11 lunar samples were not as robust as the other two sets. However, all the plants did grow. As much as this research showed us a new way of living far from Earth, we don't know what exactly going to happen there. But one thing is obvious, our moon is very different than Earth. Because there's no gravity, even watering plants on the moon will require certain technologies. And the lack of a protective layer in the almost non-existent atmosphere of the moon, we will need to build special greenhouses. Although lunar soil might have some minerals that plants need to grow, we should definitely give them so much extra care, so things won't be easy at all. But isn't it what makes us humans? Our determination and curiosity to move forward and explore as much as possible. So, these two experiments serve as a pivotal stepping stone for future lunar exploration, instilling confidence in the possibility of cultivating plants on the moon's surface. Who knows, in the not-so-distant future, lunar soil may nurture beautiful gardens, opening the doors to possibilities beyond our wildest dreams. Would you like to grab an apple grown in lunar soils? Let us know in the comments. See you in a moon garden.